I truly think that tuning your snare drum is honestly one of the coolest things in the world. I know that sounds silly, but there's this gamble of like, okay, well this time it's gonna sound better than I've ever done it before. But just like with any gamble, there's a risk that you could make it sound worse than it currently sounds. The other thing is I find it extremely meditative and I'm not trying to be a California hippie, but honestly, the process of tuning a drum just kind of calms me down. And I think it is that hidden potential that like, I'm gonna keep doing this until it sounds better than I've ever heard my snare sound before. Enough dilly dally, let's get into it. First thing I wanna do is take the old head off. Now, as far as using a power drill on your drum, I only use it when I'm removing the head. I don't use it when I'm putting the head back on because I don't want to over tighten something, but taking it off, it's completely safe. So the first thing I want to do, if it is a wood shell, I want to just rub my fingers around it and make sure there's no splinters, there's no burrs. Generally on a modern, somewhat high-end drum, you're not going to find any problems, but on a vintage drum or a very cheap drum, you might. Now in the comments below, you're more than welcome to tell me what you would do if you found a burr whether you would sand it or rub a block of paraffin wax around it. For me, I would contact somebody that does bearing edges and I would just have them refinish the bearing edge if it was a drum that really meant something to me. In this case, I can feel that there's nothing wrong, so we're gonna throw on a fresh head. This is an Aquarian single ply texture coated. Now, super important, always, always, always line up the logo of your drum head with the logo of the drum. Once we have that, we can put the hoop on and start finger tightening all of the tension rods. This would also be a good time to use maybe some bike chain lubricant on the tension rods themselves. Very, very little. You don't want it to turn greasy and oily, but just a little if you needed to. These tension rods are going in super, super smooth, so I'm not worried about it. All right, now that's done. I'm just gonna start tightening up the drum head, but not tuning. I'm just going around and giving every tension rod about three half turns just to seat the head. So, and basically when someone says seat the head, what they're talking about is making sure that the drum head itself is making full 360 degree contact with the shell or with the bearing edge. And if this is your first time swapping out a drum head, just know that the three main head manufacturers, Remo, Evans, Aquarian, they all do it slightly different as far as how they make their drum heads. Some of the companies glue the head into the rim and some crimp the rim around the drum head or the mylar. So you might hear a lot of cracking when you're tightening things up, totally normal. All right, so now we can start tuning the drum. There's a couple ways we could do this. Normally I would do this on the ground and I'd put a towel underneath the bottom head so that it's not resonating at all, especially with toms. But in this case, it'll be fine like this just to get started. And the process is just like tuning your toms. You want each one of the tension rod spots to sound exactly the same. Now it can be kind of hard to hear that. So sometimes, and that's where you know people use something like a tune bot. I'm not gonna use a tune bot for this, even though I do quite often, but for this I'll just use my ear. But I'm gonna go around. Now, if you're having trouble hearing whether they're any different than each other, there's a couple things you can do. One, you can put your finger in the middle. That kills a little bit of the overtone. You can also take down the sharpness of this sound by putting uh, just a cymbal felt. Any of your cymbal felts will do. Put it on the back of your stick, and that basically turns it into a mallet. If you have a mallet, that's fine, but this is a cheap way to do it if you don't have a mallet. Now at this point, you don't want to fine tune the drum because this drum head or mylar is going to stretch out. So you want to pre-stretch it. Give the drum some CPR. Listen to the difference in tone. Versus. So that dropped quite a bit. Now I can start to fine tune the drum. So remember, getting a drum in tune just means that all the tension rods are at the exact same tension or the same pitch. So once I feel like I've got it in tune, then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the drum to find out is it too high, is it too low? 
Okay, it's spicy. <laughs> I would say that's on the high side of how I usually like this drum, but even though I did the CPR thing, it's still gonna stretch out some more, so I'm gonna leave it right there. So we're gonna head to the kit, we're gonna try out some different tunings with music so we can see how it affects the overall sound. But real quick, I know you probably want like more insight on tuning, like, well, how do you, it really is that simple. You just need to make each tension rod sound exactly the same. I'm stoked with that. The drum is technically in tune. The question is, is it in the right tuning for what we're gonna be playing? All right, so the snare's on the kit. I do have a top snare mic, a bottom snare mic, but most of my sound comes from this single overhead, and then I just take the close mics and blend them in a bit. Yes, there is some EQ, some compression, a little bit of verb, but for the most part, the snare is sounding fairly natural. You're hearing it as it sounds. All right, so let's give it a listen. Remember, it is cranked pretty high. It's not full like 311, Chad Sexton, Adrian Young high, but it's up there. Yeah, it's spicy, it's a tad spicy, but it sounds pure, and that's what we're looking for with an in-tune snare drum. Keep in mind, this is a single-ply head with no muffling, yet. We'll talk about muffling in a second. We're looking for a pure overtone. So the tone after the initial hit should be pure and not wobbling all over the place. All right, so what would we use this tuning for? This, I would say, I would say high, not medium high. For a 14 by five and a half, maple shell, this is high. Maybe something that needs a busier groove. So when you have a dense groove like that with a lot of notes, having a higher tuning makes it a little bit easier to hear those notes. Now we do have a lot of overtone, so let's try that groove again, but let's tame that overtone. So you could use gels for this, you could use rings, big fat snare drum. Luckily this drum has an internal muffle. So now let's listen to that same groove with the same loop, but now with a muffled version of that same high tune. I like that, I like that a lot. All right, now let's take the muffling off. Let's try a lower tuning. So now we have a much lower tuning, which means that the wave file is gonna be wider, fatter. It's a thicker sound. Well, with all of those notes, it's probably gonna sound a little muddy. Let's find out. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. Now, right, <laughs> right away, uh, it's, it's too loose and too flappy for how busy that groove is, but I like the way the backbeat sounds. So if that was the tuning, I would just make the drumming much less busy. And it works better. It's really not meant for that, but it works better. So what is this tuning meant for? Well, now we're into personal opinion. You could use, as long as the snare sounds good, you could use it in any genre and eventually you get used to it and it kind of becomes the thing. So YouTubers, I hope you got something out of this. I hope just like when I tell you, oh, you gotta go practice, you gotta go make it your own. Do that with tuning, practice tuning, make it your own. Find something, crank the snare like it's a timbali and then play it in a country band, I don't care. But most importantly, do not be scared to mess around with this stuff. You're not gonna hurt the drum. Have fun with it, experiment, and I'll see you next time. Experiment, experiment. It's not a, I don't know.